Well, you know, we get to this time of year and uh, I think uh, a lot of fly anglers in the province go through a bit of a withdrawal program <laughs> because the, the fly rods go away. But uh, for many of them, the vices and the uh, fly tying materials come out. And so it's it can be a creative time of year. And I don't know anyone that's probably better qualified to talk about fly tying and and quite frankly all things fly fishing related here in Alberta than my next guest Rick Pasek he's an author he works with Stillwaters Global as an administrative um, uh, overseer I suppose uh, along with Alberta Fly Fishing and uh, he also has his own YouTube channel because he's not busy enough and that's Fly Fish Fanatic and uh, Rick uh Hello, and, and thank you for taking some time. How are you doing today? Uh, th <laughs> thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So let, let's maybe just start uh, a few years um, in, your, in your past. How did, the, uh, how did fly fishing uh, come up and, and bite you so hard? Well, I actually, I was born in Calgary and uh, my dad uh, moved here from Germany back in the, in the late 60s and he fell in love with fly fishing. Uh, down in that area in the Highwood and Bow and uh, the Old Man and certain places down there. So when I was about five or six, he introduced me to it um, down on the rivers down there. And then when we were about, I think it was about nine when we left Alberta and went to the coast. And uh, then, I mean, I it just uh, once I got into my late teens, it exploded, uh, whether it was lake fishing, whether it was beach fishing for salmon, whether it was cutthroat trout, it was yeah I, I, yeah I spent a lot of time with the fly fishing thing um yeah my dad really instilled that passion in me so as someone who's uh like no doubt you've walked literally hundreds of miles on Alberta rivers and streams let me ask you I mean we we're, we're going through an interesting time right now especially on the Bow River um how has fly fishing and fly fishing opportunities changed in Alberta and has it changed for the good or are we, are the best days behind us or are they, are they still looking forward maybe? Well, I honestly, I think there's work to do. Um, I think uh, the heyday of the rivers is in the past. Um, I think there's work to do to get them back to that. Um, I think there's, uh, there, there's, there's definitely some issues, especially invasive species issues and, and, and water issues. And uh, I mean, like I was telling you before this interview, I actually work with water in the province with the, uh, with the government. And I know there's a lot of issues um, with water supply down South because uh, irrigation takes precedent. So a lot of the rivers are suffering because of it. And it doesn't help with, with the extreme uh, um, uh, uh, droughts that we've been having as well. And, angler pressure there's a lot a lot a lot more anglers because of social media this because of this right here because of it there's a lot more anglers yeah i mean this this has been a double-edged sword i think uh in many ways uh, it, it's easier today to to go to a youtube channel and look at how to fly fish um how to tie a fly how to cast um i guess the the one thing maybe it doesn't do because you, you just got to put the time in and that is to to potentially properly release a fish to properly play a fish um those are those are learned skills uh, that that someone on the water has to do would you would you agree with that 100% uh, uh, i think it's an, and since moving back to Alberta uh, eight years ago, um, I, I I haven't done a lot of classes any uh, because I've just been so busy learning my new job and everything. But I used to teach a lot of classes back in BC, and that was one of the biggest ones is is the catch and release aspect, how to properly do it, how to properly handle the fish, how to properly fight the fish. Like a lot of people, they want to go with a super lightweight rod because I oh, you know fun the big bend and all that. But you know what? To, if you want to save the fishery might be better off going with a six weight or a seven weight instead of that three or four to get that fish in fast. Right. Uh, uh, and get them, get them released before they're all tired out. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, now you, uh, as I mentioned off the top, you're associated with a number of, of uh, fly fishing uh, posts on, on Facebook and other, other media. What, what have you been seeing in terms of, you know, does the fly fishing community echo many of these concerns or are they more focused on the, on the art and the science of fly fishing? 
both both to be honest both i i do see a lot more involvement with uh with with people trying to save fisheries nowadays there's a lot more information out there um there's a lot more posts being put up on the site that i run still waters global on alberta fly fishing on many others still waters in bc there's a lot of uh people that are trying to to learn how to save the fisheries and how to get them back up um but there's also a lot of uh there's there's still a lot of that that <sighs> The, the the issues where people they oh where do you go fish where can i go can you tell me where to go where do you where, oh where'd you get that monster instead of wanting to put the the time in like you were just saying a few minutes ago right so there, there's there's a little bit of everything there's a lot of people that want to do it for the art form there's a lot of people that want to do it because they just like fly fishing uh, and there's a lot of people that want to do it to conserve as well so it, there's there is a mix but i have noticed definitely a boost of the conservative uh the people that want to conserve our fishery and that want to try to help save it i've definitely seen that well i like that I, 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 we could go on for for probably days to talk about some of the issues affecting uh streams and and closures and fishing conditions here in alberta but um hey we are we're getting into the holidays here so let's have a little bit of fun as well um one one of the things that you do with your with your YouTube channel is introduce um, the art of of tying flies, uh, Rick, and and that's something that I've always had a, a great passion for. I'm terrible at it, but I love doing it. Um, and and I guess let's start there. What what does it take for someone who who sees this? And uh, I mean the you and and others that. Uh, um, apply this this trade if if it were um where where does one start again two answers <laughs> yes i always get two answers um it depends what you want to do um i am a person that is a i've i've always tied flies since i was a young young man like in my, my, my pre-teens um but i've always tied fishing flies so my flies are not always the prettiest they're, they're well tied. They're, they're tied well with skill and, and I know how to build a fly and, and, and stuff, but I don't tie art flies. So, but I know some people that, oh my God, they, they, the stuff they come out with, it's, just, it's, it's stunning. It's, I mean, I have some on the walls and stuff, right? They're just, uh, some of the artwork is beautiful, right? So it depends on which way you want to go. If you want to just get into fly tying, just so because you're a fly fisherman, um, it, it, it can be a really good thing because now you can match the hat. You can match the colors. You can match the sizes and all that kind of stuff that you can't get picking it up at a, at a, at a fly shop. Cause I mean, they got a limited in, a number of flies to select from, but if I'm on the water, I always have my, my tying kit with me. And if I see a, a big hatch going on and I don't have something to match it, boop, 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 <laughs> something really quick, tie it up. It can be ugly. I don't care. Let's go. Yeah, right? it's, and it's, sometimes the ugliest, nastiest flies catch more fish. It, it, it's the version of the plain air painter, you know, that brings out the canvas to the to the landscape and paints in situ. Uh, the fly tying is very much the same way when, like you say, you come across a, a hatch. Talk, I mean, when I was learning this craft, uh, three three words kind of always resonated with me, Rick, and that was shape, size, and color. And if you could get close with those three elements in a in a fly, um, chances were pretty good you you were going to fool a trout because uh, that's that's what they go on. I mean, that stream is flowing, that flies on there. They've got a literally a split second to make a decision on whether. The energy they put out to fight that current to get that piece of food it. has to be greater than. Uh, you know what? I'll add one more to that. I totally agree with you, those three, but I'll add one more to that, and that's movement. Movement in flies is, is probably my number one. It, it, if you take a look at my channel and look at most of my flies, they all have movement, movement, movement. There's like, I'm just, I was just playing earlier with this this little spay fly and it's just got lots of little movement lots of pulsation in it lots of pieces that move right so um and that attracts flies and, and then if you got a little uh, a fish if you got a little bit of flash moved in there as well 
Now all of a sudden, whoop, what was that? And then they see the movement, they see that silhouette, and then they see the color and they see the size and boom, right? It's just one additional to that three, right? Talk to me a little bit about the naming of flies, because this this is where it can get really fun. I, I just saw I'm that... terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> I I saw a recent posting, I think it was on one of your one of your channels. I'm not sure which one, but something called a, a cat's whisker snowflake. I mean that was who mine. Comes, who who comes up with you came up with this? Where it, how it, in it, the it, world it, did you come up with that name? Put it to this way. I was watching another guy that I really like as a, a fly tire coast fly out of, I think he's out of Norway. Um, uh, I was watching his YouTube channel and he tied one in orange to look more like a shrimp for saltwater fishing in uh, the Norwegian coasts and stuff. And he called it the snowflake. And so I changed the colors and a few things up for, for what I know works here uh, on the West Coast for coho, which is bright green. And also for trout, uh, if you take a look at a British fly called the cat's whisker, the cat's whisker is always green and white. So I called it the cat's whisker snowflake because it's a cat's whisker in this, yeah, I don't know, right? Uh, I, I, and you know, um, you've you've got these fanciful names like the the royal coachman, the woolly bugger. Um, so and 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 those were flies that I grew up with. But then you 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 can make the transition and you can get into the realistic flies and and yeah. we call them the morning duns and the the mayflies and and they are made to look very much like the bugs that we're seeing coming off the off something like a stimulator does exactly what the name says it does it stimulates fish action it doesn't necessarily look like anything that's uh, floating in the water it's an attractor pattern just like if you go and take a look at uh, freshwater, uh, uh, still water patterns, you've got like the, the carry special, you've got the Spratly, you've got, they're attractors. They're, it can be a dragonfly, it can be a damselfly, it can be a leech, it could be a mayfly, it could be a caddis, it could, you know, it could be all kinds of stuff, right? And that's exactly, the stimulator is another one of those. And then you get into the mayflies, which they look close to the mayfly, but what is the best part of it is think of, and this is one thing that a lot of fly tires and fly fishers that are starting out don't think about don't think about what it looks like this way think about it what it looks like that way because that's how fish see it that way so you need that silhouette take a look like in a mayfly you want those wings sticking out because that's how right and it, so that's that's a big hint for the people that are starting out tying and fly fishing think about the silhouette that what the fish see not what you see don't tie for you tie for the fish <laughs> So if you were to look into your crystal ball, Rick, um, what does the future of, of fly fishing in Alberta look like to you? Um, I think there's a, there's, we've got a really large population of young people getting into it um, in that like teenagers to uh, early thirties. There's a lot of them getting into it. And a lot of them have that, that conservation minded. Um, that's how they're thinking. Uh, I think it looks good. Um, if they can figure out a work with the uh, way to work with the government and and work with the hatcheries and work with uh, figuring out a way to, to to lessen the pressure and to lessen the the damage done by fishermen in general, not knowing catch and release and those kinds of things, I I think it's it we've we've got some of the best rivers in the world here, and I think they can be that again. I mean, the bowl used to be one of the top ten rivers on the planet. Right. It's not anymore. But I think it can be. Well, I think with people with uh, your passion and, and, and a handful of others here in Alberta, uh, you guys are leading a great charge and doing what you can to educate the rest of us on, on, on those issues. And Rick, just want to thank you so much for, for carving out a little bit of time and, and chatting with us. And uh Hey, maybe one day you and I can hit a, hit one of the, those rivers or streams, and and you can you can show me what it's all about. Sounds good. Anytime, uh, whenever you're available, give me a shout. All right. Thanks and for having we me. We should leave it off. Uh, we'll put below uh, Rick's um, uh, Facebook and uh, I guess more importantly your YouTube channel, and folks can go and check uh, uh, how to tie a fly maybe over the Christmas holidays. Rick, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.